Delighted to welcome uh, Claire Barker to make a presentation to our winner. Dan from Hertfordshire, well he's got such a winning streak, such a great uh, rider on the Caddy Show circuit, had uh, good wins out in France recently, finishing uh, leading rider in Chanty. Philip Miller takes the first, very well done to him. Philip with uh, Diane Penny Cornish's text back. second place combination in second is uh, Tina Fletcher Tina with uh, Eddie Kirkham as they pull back and release two uh, lovely little palominos <laughs> looking very very smartly turned out indeed blinkers are on they're focused to go forwards and they're faster than anything you'll see at Kempton this afternoon off we go, revving up to the stars. Sarah Cook, bow and arrow. 64.96 from our first go, He's out of the box in 16. Look at them run, look at them fly. Off we go through the first, this is good to start off with. This is off with determination. On through two, remember they're looking for that qualification for the horse of the issue. Two out as they go on and through the last. Cross the line in 59.78. Very good drive. Good time. That is 4 to out. Coming out. That's going to be the big challenge so far. 4 to out at the moment as they come out of the box through that next gate. Swings back in and out of here. That's another one gone in the slalom. 8 to out at the moment. Our judges are keeping up all the way. Very well done to the winner at this round. Of course, we've got the final to come a little later on, but very well done to Sarah Cook with Burn Arrow. Went so very close. Combination in second. Charlotte Allen Slade. Balance with a pair. Thank <laughs> you. 
Our first drove in this ring when I was 15. Uh, admittedly that was a private drive and turn out. It cost £1.50 to get the pony and truck here and my mother refused to pay the driver to stay all day. So we did the class and drove back over to Sax London which was 20 miles. But uh, great memories and uh, I'm very privileged to be able to drive this team in my 65th year. Uh, well, Bruce will be the best man to tell you about them, but uh, all thanks to George Paul as well, because it's his way, and over the years we've had a tremendous amount of fun and a tremendous amount of success with it. You might be interested to know that this is an original wagon that was built in 1912 by a company called Gibbons of Crowfield, who are still in business now. They do wonderful work restoring churches. Uh, and I was told about this wagon by a friend of mine called Jimmy Swallow, and I went up to have a look at it, and it was in a farm completely covered with very old bales of straw, and uh, we shifted the straw off it and saw that it was in reasonably good condition. The woodworm had got into the shafts, but other than that it was pretty good. Uh, and so we bought it and brought it home and restored it. Uh, but it is very much an original wagon. Well, wonderful wine, wonderful vehicle, and wonderful horses, Bruce, I'm going to come to you very quickly, just to tell us about the full stuff that we've got here. Okay, the um, offside leader, which is um, Sailor, uh, it's his first time actually in the ring as a team, and to actually be a, a leader is quite an achievement. And although he had you know, one or two little wobbles, we're very pleased with the way he's gone. Uh, the one alongside him opened his far more experience, and... Uh, he was helping show him the way I think. And then in the wheel we've got Laurel and Nettle who um, are two old stages that have been done it many times. Well they've certainly done it very, very well. We'll find out a little bit more about the Suffolk breed as well as we come to the various sections for the heavy horses as we go through over the next two days. Of course we've still got the singles to come, the uh, pairs to come and the uh, championship as well. So it's wonderful to see uh, such a turnout here at the uh, Suffolk Show for our heavy horse sections. All the way down from Scotland, 
a fabulous set of combinations here. Absolutely. Um, some very nice teams. Um, the, the top two are exceptionally good. Um, that would put a foot wrong. Nearly full on the third there, a nice team as well. And um, yeah, it was nice to see the Suffolk, which I haven't actually seen before. And we're accustomed to seeing Shires and Clyde. The score to start off, Bar Armstrong. Michael Whitaker, Ellie Van der Kolb. the top level for an exciting future for them. Now to uh, Philip Miller down from uh, Hertfordshire. Philip who was the winner of the first of the classes of the season down at the Devon County a few weeks ago. This is Nigel Eccles's and Dan Penny Cornish's.
And number 12, Albus Croft Dandy. The chestnuts. That's the one. Albus Croft Dandy at the back there. They'll be coming around here now. Uh, this one's written by Bindi Rika. Right, ladies and gentlemen, give a big cheer because the jockeys are coming in now. Show them your support. In the green, yellow, yellow cap. Followed by 33, these are the spotless one, H.R.E. Aladdin. Look at the pink on that one. That'll stand out. Oh, I love Jellings. <laughs> 17, Eastland's Mighty Mark. Charlie Todd's on that. And number 12, Elvis Croft Dandy. Take a good look. There's no betting on this, unfortunately, today. But there they are. <laughs> Bring up the back there, number 23. Fast run. Give him a chair, ladies and gentlemen. Keep pushing along. There it is. Number 12 going around on the other side. Keep pushing it down. There it is. Round the last four. 12 is now taking the lead. He's taking the head in the lead down. That was on four. 17 is coming up. Following 15, 8, 23. Give him a chair. Oh, he's back in the lead. Behind the way, there it is. I could have checked where the finish line was before that. Give him a big cheer, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. And coming in, number 10, Taylor Merrill. Good to see no fall at all in there. Your golfing friend. So the winner is. Is number 12, Elvis Grop Dandy, Bindi Marika. Followed by number 4, Elvis Grop Elite Gold, Savvy Osborne. 17, Eastland's Mighty Mark. It's capable of carrying a payload of 1,000 kilograms. However, today it's using its area to provide eight passengers, with making up a Valentine. Forward of the main base with supplies of aviation fuel and aircraft munitions. What this effectively does is extend the operational range of the aircraft depending on how many aircraft require simultaneous servicing. And that's made up by a number of different points, all of which are controlled by the team leader known as the Army Landing Point Commander, or ALPC. The pilot stations. The aircraft can carry up to 1160 rounds and fires at a rate of 625 rounds per minute. Three, as you can see, Corporal Brown providing top cover out of the Capola. This vehicle has an 11.9 litre Caterpillar engine and capable of delivering 15,000 litres of aviation fuel. And for anyone interested, and after a new camper this year, it does have its own set of back beds and a cooker inside. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, that uh, aircraft you're going to see today is the Apache Attack Helicopter. The Apache is a unique helicopter in many ways. First of all, unlike...
inbound. We're not actually going to do any commentary when the aircraft lands on because of the noise. So some things I'd like to bring to your attention. One is just to take a look at that cannon that's underneath there that was mentioned by Staff Woolens. Tom, you'll see a kind of EDAM dome as well. That's the radar. But a thing to look at as they come in, the AOPC commander will ensure that they are safely maneuvered into the area. He'll then move forward, safe the aircraft with the crew. Once he's happy, he's going to control his guys to then come in to fuel and rearm the aircraft with Hellfire missiles.
takeoff. Uh, that was actually just for your safety today, because in fact normally the idea would be to depart low and fast and try and stop the location of the fart being revealed to the enemy. Just coming in now, you can see further support vehicles arriving on the land over and a, a six-ton truck there. And now to look out for the bottom, the 30 millimeter cannon. That can be slayed to your eyes so that wherever you look, Line 7, no. Line 8, south west, 200 meter, danger of course, and this was half a ball. Keep back, we have clear top. I'm coming in, uh, power one. Aware the Apache is inbound, our friendly troops have now withdrawn to a safe distance to enable the guys to bring an attack and fire down on the enemy. The initial request has been to use that 30 millimeter cannon on the enemy insurgents. 